Hi, everybody. It's Andy Phillips here, and I've got Mike Bristow from uh, Crowd Property. Hi, Mike. How are you doing? Hi, Andy. Very good. Very good to be here. And uh, we're going to be talking about what uh, type of property deals uh, you do, which is important. We, uh, we obviously need to get some sort of criteria of what, uh, what sort of things you can fund. So uh, we've got your presentation. I'm just going to put your presentation up so you can see that now. There you go. So if you want to just go through these, the, these, these types, these criteria. Sure, absolutely. So I, I, I sort of see this as, uh, so we're going to bring it to life with what kind of products we do. But I'm, I'm just going to start with a bit of a segue from last week's session, which, um, which sort of talked a bit about uh, in, in quite a lot of detail, how, how we help serve developers' needs. But but I, I want to just touch on saving your time, valuing and saving your time uh, and, and, and what that brings. And then we'll talk about uh, the types of projects we support. Um, so just sort of jumping into that, um, this is something that I think many people massively undervalue, especially early on in their property careers. Okay. And I wanted to share a bit, bit more of our research. Um, and I, I alluded to it last week, but um, if we ask a typical developer um, how they spend their time, um, then and a third of the time, which is the critical bit of uh, which I've labeled faffing around with finance. Um, and that is broadly a waste of your time. And let me just quantify like, how important that is. Because we set out on this journey to reduce that time for developers such as yourselves and uh, property professionals such as yourselves, reduce the time that is spent faffing around with finance. Right? Let's just put some numbers on that. So what if, what if you spent a quarter of that time faffing around with finance? Right? Well, you can actually spend 40% more of your time finding sites and 40% more of your time uh, delivering sites. And the reason why that's really important, okay, is that actually, if you think about that compounded over five years, right, you can grow your property business fivefold in that period by just cutting down the time you spend faffing around with finance. Okay? Let us help you do that. and. Um, someone, I was talking this uh, this through with someone, and it just staggered by actually, God, I've got to value my time. I've got to really think about how I spend my time because what I want to be doing is spending the time on stuff that unlocks growth within my property business. And that just if you cut your time down, faffing around with finance, down to a quarter, you can grow your business fivefold better. You know, it's, it's interesting because yeah. you, you call it faffing around with finance and in some ways you know people sort of go but it's not faffing around I'm, I'm getting these you know getting the, the the financial sorted i've got my broker i've got all these different things going on um but at the end of the day you know i've i've had to do this when i've when i've um i'm buying a property you do sort of start from scratch most times you might have a broker you might have other bits and pieces in place but um, every deal is different and you do tend to faff around a lot. You do tend to, to try and find better deals, trying to find better ways of doing things. And it's instead of just cutting to the chase and saying, look, I need to go and find these properties. I need to go because that's, that's the most important thing. Finding, finding a decent property is probably paramount to the business. And, and the money side is once you've actually gone into that and you've found something, trying to trying to find the best sort of deals and trying to find the best way of funding it and there's more than one way of skinning a cat and which is the best way and you go through these mental hoops of the you know am i doing this the right thing you know doing this the right way and it is true it is faffing around i know it sounds it trivializes it in some ways but it's exactly what it is it's faffing around trying to find the best way of financing something and i'm not and uh, when i say faffing around finance i'm i'm not saying that developers are the ones that are to blame for faffing around with finance. Absolutely yeah. not. Yeah. It is the the lenders out there that aren't efficient, aren't acting in the best interest of developers and making it, you know, quick, straightforward, easy, uh, and reliable. And you know, that's the piece. It's solving that bit that 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 we require less of your time 
and um, consistency deal after deal as well i mean if you if you're in a, on a run of deals you find two or three deals in a row having consistency at the background as well is probably the most important exactly so so value your time really think about that um and and then you know the other pieces that i touched on before is there's also well it's not just the time bit what we help to do is give you competitive advantage so um you know position yourself with vendors to get a better price uh, we can help you structure the best strategy and approach to a deal um, and ultimately you know we work hard with our developers with our customers um, so to, to increase the probability of success of your projects um, as, and, and that is how a partnership act so i just wanted to sort of wrap up a bit from from last week's session because I, I think this point so many so many people underestimate the importance of this um, and the value of their time and actually if that time is spent on things that aren't growing the business it really really stacks up as lost opportunity but let's let's dig a bit into uh the sort of projects we all love talking about um specific projects um so what does um what does crowd property do well we fund anything any sort of short-term finance across any type of project um and it, it's actually very interesting that we used to say that we did anything right we fund any type of project any time short-term requirement bridging new build refurbishment all of these sort of things sort of cap you know cap, uh, catch all under that we all fund anything and then we get people phoning us up saying oh do you do new build finance so, well, yes, that's sort of covered under, we'll, we'll fund anything. Um, and, and, and so actually we thought, oh God, we better, you know, humans love pigeonholes, right? So we broke this out into, these are the products that we, that we do and offer. And, um, and, you know, literally across the spectrum. So, um, you know, get in touch with us on any type of project that you're working on. And we've even got this, this bucket in the bottom right here called special situations finance what what on earth does that mean well some really interesting stuff that hasn't naturally fitted in all of the other icons here uh, and product types um, and you know that's where uh, someone's approached us saying I've got I, I want to buy a portfolio of 10 Victorian single let houses I want to do a rolling refurb across the entire estate I want to exit three or four of them end up with no money down and i've got six hmos um some high quality uh high quality hmos that i've refurbed and i can let and i can really cash flow yeah. that kind of acquisition is 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 you know there's there's potential for that in the market because there are you know as soon as a landlord wants to dispose of their portfolio um then there are fewer buyers by definition and actually again if you can get supported by a great lender that really understands how to structure that and again, you can put yourself in front of the queue um, and potentially be offering a price that's not necessarily um, the highest. This is, this is another interesting aspect to this because, you, you know, again, going back to this, this concept of faffing around with finance, when you're doing something like uh, that, that particular thing you were talking about where you've got a portfolio and you're going to do different types of things with, within it, um, that sort of puts a lot of pressure on you as the developer to try and find maybe one entity that is going to be able to do things like rolling refurbs mm. um uh, sales of certain product and keeping certain product and and working out the finance and the, and the time scales and all that sort of thing and it's not going to be one bank that's going to be able to do that yeah yeah exactly exactly and and, and, and we have you know we have projects right across all of these uh, all of these products and, and a lot of them lots of them challenge us i was talking this morning on, on the clubhouse about a development joint venture finance where you know especially right at the minutes um project costs are going up because of materials inflation and, and actually theoretically the end values aren't going up um so, so you operate you assume it's the value today so therefore theoretically actually land values residual land values are going down but vendors aren't really factor, factoring that in and and so how do you get a deal over, over the line and progressing well potentially joint venture with that um with that um landowner or the, or the existing building owner 
And we've done that many, many times, structuring that in the SPB with the right contract, shareholder agreements, and all of that. And we can guide through that process of how to set that up. You know, again, if you're having discussions with landowners, you might be able to offer them a bit of a kicker at the end, okay, which then aligns to better to what the price expectations they want from that, that land. And you can make the deal happen where many other people bidding on that may not be. Or there's the danger of them overpaying, at which, uh, at which point, you know, it may be right in certain circumstances to just step away and let someone else overpay for that project because you have to make sure that there's enough money reward in it for all the effort and the risk that you take by embarking on a project. So, you know, we'll, we'll help you across anything. I mean, good example is we were the first to introduce the modern methods of construction dedicated uh, finance product, um, which has been popular. And... <coughs> clearly a big trend of things to come with, with, with modular construction. So let, let's have a look at some uh, real world pictures. Um, and and here, is, here are some of the, uh, the, sort of the, the, the grander uh, construction projects that, that we fund. And actually on top right here is a lovely village in, in Somerset, um, a place called Hinter St. George, where the developer there um, had no experience and he came to us with his team in hand, had built a really good team because he knew that this was going to be complex. Um, and we backed him. And, he, and about three weeks ago, he paid this back in full. Um, so that was about a 5 million GDV uh, project. And actually, if you look at this, this screen, these are bigger projects um, amongst the, the types of projects we do. And But don't get put off by that, okay? These are the ones that we put photos like this on on social media and they get a load of engagement they get shared more widely by social media algorithms and and people build up uh, a, a perception that we only do grand sexy projects like these and you know really don't think like that um we fund literally any type um of project and you know we're here and and it's very much in the market to fund any type of project and i'll show you a, a few others as well so um some commercial to residential uh projects here um and these vary in shape size and location and everything um and some of these are pretty ugly if you look at that middle row on the right hand side that's a pretty ugly building um and and look again it's not just the big sexy projects um you know there's great opportunity in commercial to residential um conversions um, and then also in HMOs and co-living products uh, projects as well. Um, and here you see the middle, uh, the, the sort of the red building here on, on, on the bottom. That's a hundred thousand pounds student HMO conversion in Liverpool. Um, so look, it really is every type of project. And again, we can help and advise and, and build the case for you, uh, and and help you risk managed through the process and increase the chances of you being successful in the project that you're working on um, because it's in all our interests uh, we want you to be successful uh, because that's good for the security of our loan um, so we're very much in this together um, and, and fully committed to that uh, partnership and one, one of the things you can do actually is, is take a look at our website um, uh, and crowdproperty.com, I think it's slash case studies, uh, or you can access it through the, the, the menu system. These are 12 of our projects that we sent video crews out to, um, some during it, uh, some after uh, the project. And you can get a feel for uh, the types of projects we back, the types of people we back, um, the um, sort of challenges along the way, and how actually like, the partnership that they have with Crowd Property is. Uh, is helpful and um we've got uh actually the the, the hinton st george somerset project i mentioned earlier that's in the in the running for our 2021 project of the year um, so we've got five projects that we've announced on social media um that's uh, that are in the running for that um uh mo and philip um uh won that award uh on the, in the top left here that that was windham hall in plymouth uh, won that project last year and got five brilliant projects uh, in, in, in the running. And that will actually be announced at the PIN dinner. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll have a big 
hoo ha about uh, the trophy award for that. So we're looking forward to that. Just picking out a two or three of the products, um, stuff we see that's been hot recently is uh, uh, development exit and development finish and exit finance. What does that mean? Well, often projects run late, um, you know, and and that's not um, that's not atypical during the pandemic as well. Um, so, and and often many of the other finance providers they'll have quite heavy penalty interest rates and maybe penalty fees just when you don't really need them, they, they, they kick in. So we're refinancing quite a lot of projects that are nearing the end to enable them to finish off and, and, and grant them a sales period and get them off these the, the sort of the penalty rates. Things like airspace development, and modern methods of construction, these are very much you know, sort of key trends in the market to really enable the UK to build more homes um, uh, quickly, efficiently, um, without requiring huge swaths of land, especially with the airspace and development finance. And again, one of our other uh, projects of the year projects was a was a modular drop on to an airspace development um, in um, uh, near Waterloo Station, uh, which is one of our video case studies. So do have a look at that. That's uh, that's a, a, a brilliant project. There. Yeah, I've gone, I've gone through some of those uh, some of those case study videos. Uh, and there's a there's a huge spread of different types of development in that, uh, which I, again is sort of goes through to show the sort of diversity of uh, finance that you guys do. Exactly, and and it's and, and and reflective of the diversity of project types that there are out there in the market, right? Yeah. And you know, there's no cookie cutter approach to to development finance, uh, such as what we do. You've just got to be packed full of experts to really help mitigate some of the risk towards it. And, and, and help those developers um, uh, succeed in, in, in the, the projects. Um, these are a few of the things that are becoming hot. HMO and co-living finance, that's, that's, that's always going to be popular. And I, I think more and more uh, larger schemes are coming through. The joint venture finance, as I discussed earlier, uh, you know, setting up something where the, where the landowner puts the land in, uh, you put in the finance and the, uh, or get, arrange the finance and put the effort in. Um, and then you can get to a mutually beneficial structure for that without actually transacting on the, on, on, on the land or the asset, the building, whatever. And then special situations finance, kind of our catch-all for the beautifully complex and uh, different deals that we see that we really welcome and work hard to understand uh, with you and help you out through that. And then the final, the final piece is that uh, just very, very recently, we've introduced this planning game finance uh, product, um, which enables us to assess uh, and understand and bear the risk of earlier stage products, uh, projects. So um, potentially those who don't yet have the benefit of full planning. We have in-house town planning capability here uh, at Crowd Property as well as all the, the sort of the, the, the elements and the skill sets required for um, <coughs> delivering on what we are, which is property financed by property people. Um, so, it, it, you know, the, the, this is very, very bespoke and, and it's very much deal by deal. So, you know, if, you, if you're in this situation where you've got something where, um, where you're looking at planning permissions, you're looking at potential, you maybe want to get ahead of the game in terms of acquiring it, we can help you de-risk your acquisition of it, but also ultimately we can sort of fund in you know, an earlier stage than, than, than before we launch this, this product. Why is that? How is that? Because we've got the in-house expertise to be able to really understand, guide and support you on that. So, you know, as I've mentioned before, the best approach is you know, whichever bucket it is, just get your project in, uh, apply through this just very, very brief and straightforward form and let us help you think through the project. Let us help you guide, hey, look, actually, we're not sure about this because of X, Y, and Z. Maybe you shouldn't spend any more time on it. Or yes, this looks like a great project relative to billions of pounds worth of projects we've seen before. You know, drop everything, close the deal. Let us help you negotiate with the vendor, etc. It's you know, come to us early. Let us help you filter and find the best project for you um, to spend your time wisely to get the rewards that 
that you deserve from all of that effort undertaking a property project. So just wrapping up, really, you know, as, as I mentioned before, property finance by property people, it's, you know, this is different in the market. This is because this is what we wanted. We got the lender that we wanted when we were doing our projects. Um, you know, we really care and, and committed to helping you deliver your property vision. Um, and, and, and we'll do that you know, with what you need from your finance provider. And that's very much around speed, ease, certainty, expertise and transparency uh, in funding your property projects. So we can be quick, we can be helpful. We've built, gone out there and built the best property project lender in the market because that's what we wanted. Um, and, and there's no better place to start uh, building a business when you identify the pain yourself, you're frustrated by nobody delivering to us, and you go and build it yourself. And that's very much what we went and did. So hopefully that gives you a bit more of a flavor of uh, the types of projects that, 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 that we fund. Broadly, in summary, it's anything. Let us help you with anything. And you know, let us help you select those right projects and let us help you, um, you know, with, the, with, with succeeding in, in delivering those. That's brilliant, Mike. Uh, just so one thing, I mean, we, we'll put the link below the uh, where they can apply. Um, we'll put that link in. One thing that has struck me is that when a client has used you for a finance uh, or financing a project that they've done, how do you think that they their mindset is when they go into further projects, knowing of what you've already done for them in one project? Yeah. Well, How I mean, do you think they go into the next next projects? I mean, is is it just does it just take a lot of weight off, knowing that there is a route that they can go down, and you know that if they know their numbers, they know what they're doing, the they know that there's going to be some speed and some and some certainty in there. Do you think that changes the mindset of the developer when they go find going to find new projects? Um, so, so massively, it's a confidence boost. But I mean, if you forty percent of our lending is to, to, to developers that have borrowed more than once, um, so that level of repeat rate is really, really important. It's extra impressive when we're in high growth and acquiring new customers all the time. So, uh, so that is actually a, a, a stat we're very, very proud of, and it really demonstrates that that we are genuinely supporting people and, and, and enabling them to deliver those projects quicker, easier, uh, and, and ultimately more successfully. Um, and, um, you know, it's, it's a, uh, one of the visions we had was, look, lenders, you know, never have we in our teams uh, of doing projects ourselves, neither we really put the lender as part of our power team. We'd have an architect, we'd have a planning consultant, we'd have uh, you know, flood risk consultant, all of these sort of people, advisors in our team. But actually, once you work with someone, it's easier to work on the next one, the next one, yeah. the next one. We never really had a lender because we never really, quite frankly, trusted any of the lenders. It was all very transactional. It was all very project focused. It was all very, you know, they had an aim to monetize as much as they possibly could out of one loan. Right? Whereas our, the, the way we think about the vision of building crowd property is, you know, with a lender for the power team. So once you've worked with us once, um, you'll, you'll, you'll appreciate and really understand that support that we give you and that increased likelihood of success, firstly. But then secondly, you know, the benefit of working with people time and time again is you know how we work, we know how you work, it's more efficient, it's quicker, it gives you greater advantage. You can then spend less time faffing around with finance right? uh, and more time growing your, your business. And that's really the heart of it um, is, is you know, nobody needs more stress in their lives, especially as uh, property developers. If you can lock in the people that you really work well with and really trust and really back and know that they have your back, then, you know, that, helps that you know that time invested in that relationship up front in that first deal okay you just um benefit from that time and time and time again on on future deals so it's it's a it's a big thing growing your power team 
right across the services, including having a lender there. Brilliant. Mike, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you again, and uh, hopefully it gives some people some some uh, some hope that there is a it's just a, a much simpler way, bottom line, of actually just getting their finances sorted out for the projects and uh, the deals that they've got coming up in future. So uh, we're going to be doing another one uh, over the next few weeks. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. We'll put the links in below that uh, Mike spoke about, especially the apply one, because that's uh, the major thing. And, uh, you know, so if you do have a project that you're looking at right now, just go over to that, put the details in and start talking. That's the that's the key to this, isn't it? Indeed, very much so. Thank you, Andy. Really appreciate it. No problems. We'll speak to you next week. Thank you. Cheers, Mike.